Imagine standing on the edge of the world's mightiest warship, the salty breeze kissing your face as you prepare to take the plunge into the unknown depths below. But hold on tight, because this isn't just any ordinary leap into the ocean. When you jump off an aircraft carrier, you're diving headfirst into a whole new world. A world where you're not necessarily at the top of the food chain. In today's video, we will unravel the mysteries of Navy life and explore the evolution of tradition from daring feats of the past to the safety-conscious practices of today. From the high-flying antics of yesteryear to the modern-day thrill of a swim call, the Navy's legacy is a testament to the courage and resilience of those who call the sea their home. But before we take the plunge, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Because trust me, you won't want to miss a single wave of adventure. Let's set sail. Picture this, you're standing on the edge of an aircraft carrier, the vast expanse of the ocean stretching out before you like an endless canvas. It's swim call time, and sailors from all walks of life are gearing up for a refreshing dip. But amidst the thrill of the moment, there's a silent guardian watching over them. The gunner perched atop the ship, scanning the waters for any signs of danger. Meet the eyes in the sky, the Navy's sharpshooters tasked with ensuring the safety of their fellow sailors. Their mission, keep a keen lookout for any unwelcome visitors, particularly those of the toothy, finned variety. But as we'll soon discover, their role goes far beyond mere surveillance. Now, you might be thinking, why not just take aim and fire if a shark approaches? Well, my friends, it's not as simple as it seems. Shooting at a shark underwater is about as effective as trying to extinguish a bonfire with a squirt gun. The laws of physics have a way of throwing a curveball when bullets meet water. When bullets meet water, they undergo a dramatic transformation, losing their velocity faster than a speeding torpedo. Mythbusters even put this theory to the test, revealing that even the mighty 50 caliber bullet barely makes a dent before surrendering to the depths. In the vast expanse of the open ocean, sailors are keenly aware of the presence of sharks. But what happens when myths about combating these predators clash with reality? On board naval vessels, gunners keep a watchful eye on the waters below, ready to respond to any potential threats. But the idea of shooting at sharks to protect swimmers is more fiction than fact. Bullets fired into water lose their lethality within a few feet, rendering them ineffective against sharks. The unique hydrodynamics of underwater bullets make them unsuitable for neutralizing threats in the ocean. Moreover, sharks are cautious creatures, often circling and inspecting their prey before making a move. The presence of a dedicated lookout is crucial for spotting sharks and ensuring the safety of swimmers. In the early days of naval history, sailors would plunge into the ocean from dizzying heights, including the flight decks of aircraft carriers and even the anchor chains of ships. It was a display of courage and camaraderie but also a testament to the risks inherent in naval life. But as safety became a paramount concern, particularly in the wake of tragic accidents, the approach to swim calls underwent a significant transformation. Today, stringent safety standards govern every aspect of these recreational activities. Modern swim calls are meticulously planned affairs, with designated areas cordoned off safety briefings conducted, and trained personnel on standby. From the deployment of rescue boats to the presence of lookout teams, every precaution is taken to ensure the well-being of sailors. While the thrill of plunging into the ocean remain, today's swim calls prioritize safety above all else. In the 17th century, Royal Navy sailors were allotted a gallon of beer each day. While it may seem excessive, the alcohol content was often less than 1%, making it more of a refreshment than an intoxicant. However, the times changed, and so did the preferred libation. 
The beer was eventually replaced by what became known as a rum ration. Every day, sailors would receive a tot, roughly three shots of rum, marking a shift in the naval drinking culture. This daily tradition continued for centuries, but in 1970, the Royal Navy decided to end the rum ration, deeming it unsuitable for the demands of a modern navy. The end of the rum ration marked a turning point, with the Royal Canadian Navy following suit in 1972. Sailors, however, could still enjoy beer from vending machines with a daily limit of two. But as it often happens, a few misbehaviors can spoil the party for everyone. In 2014, after an incident aboard HMCS Whitehorse, the Royal Canadian Navy banned drinking at sea and removed the vending machine. Now, let's cross the Atlantic and explore the US Navy's relationship with alcohol. The US Navy has one of the strictest alcohol consumption policy, with a long history of regulation and restriction. In 1794, US Navy sailors received half a pint of distilled spirits per day which was later reduced and eventually eliminated by 1862. The exceptions were rare, and alcohol on board was severely restricted. In 1980, a 45-continuous-day rule was implemented, allowing a beer day after 45 days at sea with more than five days until the next port call. The US Navy's approach to alcohol has evolved, balancing tradition with contemporary safety concerns. The 4th of July celebration is not just a spectacle, it's a testament to the dedication and professionalism of the men and women who serve in the US Navy. From meticulously planned drills to precision maneuvers, every aspect of the event reflects their unwavering commitment to excellence. As the day unfolds, the skies above the naval vessel come alive with the roar of jet engines and the flash of fireworks. Aerial displays showcase the skill and prowess